Welcome back people to hands down the undisputed best install videos on the planet brought to you by GK Tech. This is Officer Dan and the boys coming back at you with yet another one for the GT86 BRZ FRS and GR cars traction mod and arm. Now spinning before your very eyes on the laziest of Susans we got from a pawn shop down the road we have what I've already mentioned before the traction mod and arm. Now now, through our AI technology, we can see your head with a giant question mark above it on the other side of the screen saying, Traction Mod? the F does that even mean, Dan? Well, hold those thoroughbred horses, partner. We can explain. All the explanation you need can be seen on our product page. We list every and all information on there and update it more often than you brush your teeth. Mentioned on that very same product page is the shoehorn relocation bracket, which converts your subframe mount to a double shear mount. And that will make much more sense on the install portion of this vid. We'll deep dive into this later, but to keep you up for speed for now, the Chinese restaurant is calling and asking for their lazy Susan back, so we best be heading over to the install section of this here vid. First step is to remove the under tray so that you actually have access to remove the traction arm. Pop off the handy dandy clips on both sides of the tray, then whip off those two 10 millimeter nuts, as you can see, and lower the tray on down. Pro tip, do not leave your mouth open as there are more than likely rocks and or dust from all those times you totally didn't go off the track in your 8.6. Now sling your spanner and ratchet up and wind off the nut that's securing the arm to the subframe and punch that bolt out of the way. Head south to the other side of the arm, sling your tool up, and wind that nut off, punching that bolt out of the knuckle and then proceeding to remove the arm. Now, for some reason, people always love to compare things, so we thought we'd give you the visual pleasure of showing that comparison. On the left, you have the press bent, thin and conservative traction arm fitted with a rubber bushing to ensure you give that tofu the most comfortable ride in the world. On the other side, you have Ultra Beefcake 9000, a fully adjustable chromoly GK Tech arm that will more than likely outlast the longevity of the car, which can also be used as a battle weapon if we do go to the war against the aliens that will be here soon. Pro alien tip, these arms are directional, meaning that we've removed the left-hand side arm from the car and the robust Ultra Beefcake GK arm also suits the left hand side. So, bending down from the subframe and away from the wheel to ensure you have clearance, which you can see here on the screen. On the note of aliens, what else is usually alien for drift guys is a good goddamn alignment. On your very screen is the arm at its oh so minimal length, measuring 61 millimeters from the start of where the locking nut bottoms out to the center of the bearing. If you were to wind that to the OEM equivalent length, that would measure in at 89 millimeters, measuring in the same fashion as before from the base of the arm to the middle of the rose joint, which is made up of 59 9 millimeters measuring from the base of the adjuster to the middle of the rose joint. Now, the OEM equivalent length will change depending on ride height, but do not worry as we've got a handy little table to show you right here on this very screen. We also include this in the ASM guide. To break it down, the OEM ride height is approximately 370 millimeters measuring from the wheel center to the top of the guard. That means that as the car is lowered, the arm should be made longer to accommodate, which works out to be 10 millimeters for every 25 millimeters lower than OEM or one inches for all the Americans still using the Imperial system all the time. Also, pro adjustment tip, we recommend starting at the OEM equivalent length for your given ride height, which should be suitable for grip and mild drift applications. This can be adjusted by being reduced in five millimeter increments to make the toe curve in more aggressive and increase the rear end grip at the expense of tire life. Drifters, eat your hearts out. Then lastly, you'll have the maximum safe length of adjustment, which measures in at 104 millimeters measuring from the same damn places we mentioned in the last two times, which is made up of 64 millimeters again from the same damn places we've mentioned three times now. We always recommend stretching this little guy's legs first, meaning winding it out to its maximum safe extension and then inwards from there to the OEM equivalent length. This ensures you get a safe thread overlap of both the rose joint and the extender. Now that we're locked, cocked, and ready to rock, let's head back over to the Tofu truck. First step, remove the little 10 millimeter holding the handbrake cable to the subframe bracket. Head north and whip those two bolts out of the chassis that secure the front of the bracket, then head back down and whip the bolt that holds the subframe bracket to the subframe. Get your beautiful shoehorn piece that we've so lovingly provided 
and appropriately mate that with the OEM subframe bracket, turning this sucker into a slick and strong double shear mount. Heading back to the front, let's install the two bolts in the front of said bracket, leaving those loose and hand tight for now as you want the wiggle room to get the rest of the gear together. Head inwards slightly, line back up your handbrake cable and whip that 10 millimeter bolt back through. Wind that down and tighten it down to the spec shown right here on the screen. Now get your uber robust traction arm after fitting the thick spacer on the top and the thin spacer on the bottom and slide that into the double shear mount. Remember fitting up the correct side so that it bends down to clear the subframe and also out to clear the wheel. Get the supplied hardware and throw that up through the double shear mount, winding the nut safely and snugly into the threads. Scoot on over to the knuckle side and throw the OEM bolt through one side, then wind the nut on the other. And being that everything is fitted up, we can go ahead and torque this sucker down to the spec shown on the screen. Head up to the two mounting bolts on the subframe bracket, and being as we left these only hand tight, tighten them down properly, and most importantly, leave the subframe bolt until last, torquing that down to these specs shown right here. And now torque these little dudes down to the specs shown here as well. Now let's address the big metal elephant in the room. I don't know if you've realized this or not, but you're not actually bolting the traction arm to the same mount. Shock, shock, horror, horror. From our research, we found that the subframe is loosely based off the all-wheel drive Subaru subframe, which has quite a bit of anti-squat. This is good for an all-wheel drive front-wheel drive car to prevent lift in the front and aid in traction, but it's not really ideal for a car that spins the rear wheels. How do we fix that? by moving the position of the arm downwards and further forward like we've done with the relevant bracing, of course. We had a professional model explain these in a more technical video that you can see here on your screen, so feel free to peep that if you have the time and want to delve into it with detail. Now, if you're a GK veteran and you've seen at least one of our how-to videos, you'd know that the bearing needs to run central. It cannot be cocked left or cocked right. Otherwise, you'll piss off the bearing and cause global warming. Because we've set our length earlier and the bearing is central, we can lock the locking knots up now. Thank God. Wind those nuts on down, hold the extender with your favorite wrench, and tighten one locking nut down, then the other, ensuring they're just like my driving career and going absolutely nowhere. Now, pro tip number 368, depending on how low your Batmobile is and or where the locking nuts end up when you tighten them down, there may be some interference, so keep that in mind. So please lift your wheel up on full compression and then down on full droop and check for any nasty contact. If you get some, you may need to trim that OEM bracket. Or in our case, we cleared and we are good to go. You're almost done. But just before being done, you can whip that tray up, winding the nut back in, leaving it loose for now, and head on over to the other side and throw that clip in. Snap! Then the other. Snap! Then head back over to the two little nuts and tighten them on down. Get the confetti blaster out, because tonight the town will party and the gods will call your name from the heavens. Good job, my dude, and hey, you can high-five yourself because you've got some serious double shear braced and ready traction mods. Let's not forget the amount of adjustment there you have for your 30 kilowatts of power. And these dudes, let me tell you, are the god of the goddamn install videos. They can be seen here, thriving-ish. Please get in contact if you can't do anything or bring your car to a professional to have this stuff installed. It will save you so much time. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and Guest Hand Zach with the world's best how-tos. We'll see you next time. Peace.